Hi, and welcome to another AppleChamp tutorial. In today's tutorial, we'll be covering the Finder application. We'll begin by discussing the user interface, and then I'll talk about the Finder preferences, and then I'll tell you about some keyboard shortcuts, and then lastly, we'll cover some tips and tricks. Finder is the file management system in Mac OS X. It is how you browse your Mac to organize and view all of your documents. I'm going to briefly go over the basics of Finder and then cover some features that a lot of you may not be aware of. So let's open Finder from the dock. And when you open Finder, you will always see this browser window. So let's just go through the user interface quick. At the top, we have this toolbar, which has back and forward buttons. Then it has four different view modes. So the first view mode we have is icon view. Then we have list view. Then we have column view. And we have cover flow. Then the next option we have in our toolbar is this action button, which basically allows you to perform a bunch of actions on the file that you have selected. So de depending on the type of file you have, the actions available will be different. And then lastly, we have our Arrange menu, which allows you to sort the items in your folder by different categories. So by name, application category, date last opened, etc. We have a search bar, which allows you to search your entire Mac for a specific item or only search the folder you're currently viewing. So if I type Automator, it'll search my Mac for anything Automator related or I can change to just search the application's folder. And in this case, the automated application is available in both. If I change that now, if I go to my desktop, and now search for automator, you'll see again, if it searches the entire Mac, it picks up automator. But if I click on desktop, there's nothing because automator is not found in the desktop. Moving on, we have the sidebar, which is divided into two categories. We have our favorites menu, which is basically just a collection of common folders that you might use. You can customize this menu as you see fit. If there's any folders in here that you don't use or you don't specifically want available, you can simply right click on them and say remove from sidebar. This does not delete the folder in any way. It just removes it from the sidebar. And you can also add folders to the sidebar simply by dragging them to it. So if I create a new folder on my desktop, and I drag it, I can place it anywhere in the sidebar that I want. And then again, to remove it, I'll just remove from sidebar. The devices section shows you any media devices that are connected to your Mac, such as hard drives, USB drives, or disk images. And then at the bottom of our finder window, we can enable two more options by coming up to the menu bar and selecting view we can show the path bar and we can also show the status bar. The status bar simply shows you the total number of items you have in your finder window and the number of items you have selected. And it also shows you the total amount of space you have available in your hard drive. The path bar simply shows you the full path to the folder that you're in. So if I go to applications and open up iWork 09. I can see that I'm currently in Macintosh HD, Applications folder, iWork 09. We also have a proxy icon at the top of our Finder window, which has a few uses. I never use it, but I think it's worth mentioning. If you right click on the proxy icon, it also shows you hierarchy of the path of where you're in from the current folder, up one folder, up another folder, finally to your, your actual computer. So essentially, it does the same as what the path bar would do for you. Lastly, we have the close, minimize, and zoom buttons in the top left-hand corner. Close and minimize are self-explanatory, but the zoom button basically zooms your finder window to fit the content you're currently viewing. So if I click it once, it becomes smaller because I don't have as much content to view. If I click it again, it goes back to where it was. So if I switch to column mode, column view, and I'll select one 
folder. Now I have two columns being used. If I click on the zoom button, it will maximize the height to view as many of the applications I can and it will minimize the width to fit only those two columns. If I click zoom again, it will go back to where it was before. Now a new feature for some of you is that you can customize the toolbar at the top of your finder window to display functions that you prefer. If you right click on the toolbar and select customize toolbar, you will see a window with many additional options that you can drag to your current toolbar. For example, if you would prefer to be able to delete a file by clicking on a button rather than by right clicking or using the keyboard shortcut, you can simply add the delete button to your toolbar for simple access. Now if I wanted to delete a file, all I would have to do is select the file and select the delete button and it moves it to trash. That easy. You can also add any application to your toolbar by simply going to your Applications folder and dragging the application to the toolbar. Now, many applications wouldn't have any purpose, but there are a few applications that can accept certain files and start a workflow for you. And this could be handy to have a quick shortcut to it. So you can just drag a file onto that application and then begin your workflow. And then to remove the buttons, like the application or the delete button, simply go back to Customize Toolbar and I can now drag them off. To access the Finder Preferences, like with any other application, select the application name in the menu bar and go to Preferences. We have some options here to display some devices that are connected to your Mac directly on the desktop for quick access, such as hard drives, external drives, CDs, DVDs and iPods or connected servers. You'll see they've just appeared on my desktop and now I can just access any of them by double clicking on it. So I'll just take those off quick. Then we have an option to choose which folder we want Finder to open in by default each time you open a Finder window. So if you use a specific folder frequently and instead of browsing to it each time, you can just choose to open to it each time. So currently I have my Documents folder as my default folder, but I'm in Dropbox folder. So if I close Finder and then open it again, you'll see it doesn't open in the Dropbox folder, it opens in Documents because that's my default. Then you can always open folders in a new window instead of in the same window that you browsing in. So for example, if I go to Applications, if I double click on iWork currently, it'll open it in the same window. If I go back and say open folders in a new window and double click, it'll open it in a new window. And then the other preferences that I want to discuss is the sidebar. You can, in your preferences, easily enable or disable certain folders in your sidebar. So if I remove my documents, perhaps accidentally or I didn't need it at one point, and now I want it back. I can simply come to Preferences and I can check the checkbox again and it'll add it back to my sidebar. And then I can always just rearrange it by clicking and dragging wherever I want it to go. And then lastly, we have the Advanced Preferences. Now, we have the option to show all file name extensions. So if I go to my Dropbox, you'll see I have two documents. And if I say show all file name extensions, you'll see now that it shows us the pages extension. And if I uncheck that, it removes the extension. Then we have two options to show certain warnings when working with a Mac. We can enable or disable these warnings, whether we like them or not. And then we can also choose to, by default, when we empty our trash, to empty it using the empty trash securely feature. And then we can also choose how we want Finder to work when we when we do a search within the Finder window. I can by default search this Mac or search the current folder or use the previous search scope. You can change these settings each time you search within Finder. This is just the default. So if I say search the current folder and I'm in my applications and I type launchpad 
you'll see that by default it's searching the applications folder and not this Mac. But if I change the default search to search this Mac, then when I search for Launchpad, by default it searches the Mac. But I can always quickly search the folder by just selecting the name. So firstly, let's just talk about using arrow keys to navigate through folders. If I select an application in my applications folder, I can just use my arrow keys to move around, which is pretty straightforward. But let's say I have a folder selected, and now I want to go inside that folder without clicking with my mouse. I can hold down the command key and press down on my keyboard. And now I'm in that folder and I can begin navigating using my arrow keys again. And if I want to go out of this folder, up one level, I just hold the command key and press up. And then I go back to my applications folder. Whether you're a professional who uses your Mac for business or just using your Mac for personal use, I highly recommend learning the keyboard shortcuts you have available to you. In a very short while, you will memorize your most used functions. Common ones that everyone should learn are things like Command N, which opens a new Finder window, Command plus Shift plus N creates a new folder, and Command plus the Delete or Backspace key on your keyboard will move the item that you have selected to the trash. There are also shortcuts to open up specific folders, such as Command Shift A to take you straight to your applications folder. Now remember that shortcuts you use will be applied to the application you have selected. So if you're trying a shortcut and it's not working, it's probably because you have the incorrect application selected. Make sure that it says Finder in the menu bar. If you would like to learn more keyboard shortcuts and to see a list of available shortcuts to you, you can simply browse through your menu bar options and you'll see next to each option you have available, it shows you the keyboard shortcuts that you have. And you'll see with Finder, there are many available to you. Almost everything you can do in Finder has a keyboard shortcut assigned to it. Now from time to time, while working on your Mac, and as you get more experienced, you may find it necessary to access your library folder. And as of the new OS X line, the library folder is no longer accessible through standard means. It is simple enough to get to though. So with Finder selected, all you need to do is click the Go option in the menu bar. And then in this menu, you can just hold down the Alt or Option key on your keyboard. It's the same key. And you'll see that the library option appears. If I release the Alt slash Option key, it disappears. So just hold down Option. And then to access library, you can simply select it and it'll take you to your library folder. You can also resize your finder window in a variety of ways within line. If you hold down the option key, well, before we do that, the standard resizing, you can just select anywhere on the edge of your window and you can just drag it and it'll move that edge along with your mouse. But now, if you want to resize symmetrically, so instead of me just dragging on one side, I can hold down the Option key on my keyboard and then drag and it will resize the window in both directions symmetrically. That also works if I hold down from the corner. It resizes symmetrically in all directions. The other option we have available is that when we resize, we can lock the aspect ratio of our window and basically just scale it proportionally. And to do that, we can hold down the shift key. So if I hold down shift on the side and I drag, you'll see that it, no, it doesn't just grow width wise, it grows in the height as well. It's keeping the proportions equal. And the option and shift keys also work together. So if I hold down shift to scale proportionally, you can see that it's scaling proportionally, but it's only moving on the one side. Then I can hold down Option, and I can scale proportionally symmetrically. And on that note, we'll end here. That's all for this Apple Champ tutorial. See you next time.